still wonder what it feel like and I, I know I cheat the goal What's going on guys? Med school interview season is finally here. So I'm going to tell you guys everything you need to know on how to ace your interview. Well, I personally interviewed at five medical schools. I got accepted into four of them. And the fifth one that I didn't get accepted to was an out-of-state school that had five spots for out-of-state students and interviewed over 300 applicants. So I didn't feel too bad about that one. And I feel like the main reason why I got those four acceptances was because I did so well in my interviews. I'm going to tell you guys everything that I personally did and I'm going to tell you guys what to do when you get your med school interview. Even those videos geared towards medical students, you can use these tips for interviews at any other school or for even a job interview. So the way I'm gonna structure this is I'm gonna tell you guys everything you need to do in the sequence that it happens. So the very first thing when you get your interview invite is you need to ultimately decide is if you want to go or not. The reason I say that is because your interview expenses all are out of pocket. The schools don't pay for you to go there. So if you are traveling to a different school, you need to decide if it's worth the expense to go interview there. If you have have decided you're going to the interview, you're going to need to book your flights in your hotel. If you don't book these two things really far in advance, then these expenses can get really high. So make sure you book your hotel and your flights as soon as possible. So typically you want to book your flights so that you arrive the day before your interview around early morning or midday. This way that gives you plenty of time to relax once you get to wherever your interview is at. Or if there is a flight cancellation, there is still time for you to make it later on that day. And as far as leaving, you want to make sure you book your flight so it's about six or seven in the evening. The reason that is is because some interviews do last until 5 p.m. that day. So you don't want to book it too close to the end of your interview. And as far as booking a hotel, look for the cheapest hotel that you can find within a close proximity of the school because traveling, renting a car, or taking a taxi or Uber or Lyft can be really expensive. Once you have your travel arrangements booked, you need to figure out your outfit. I know this may seem a little bit superficial, but you do have to look good. You have to look professional for a medical school interview because this is a professional school. So for guys, you need to have dress shoes, slacks, a belt, dress shirt, tie, suit jacket, and possibly even a watch. The reason why I want you guys to do this next is because you want to give yourself plenty of time to make sure everything fits you have all the right colors for guys I recommend either wearing a black or blue suit make sure your shoes go well with that suit color make sure they're comfortable because you're gonna be doing a lot of walking make sure your belt matches your shoes make sure your watch also matches your belt and your shoes for shirts I recommend going with either a white gray or blue shirt you can wear other colors you can wear patterns but you want to look as professional as possible you want to look like you are ready to be in medical school for ties I also recommend staying more on the neutral end I personally wore a grayish white tie and I wore a white dress shirt with that. And lastly for appearance, as far as your facial hair and your haircut goes, you want to make sure your hair is nicely kept. You can have long hair, but just make sure it looks good. It looks neat and be sure to shave. I know that there are still some very conservative people who interview you at medical school. So you want to make sure you have a clean shaven face the day of the interview, just because some people can interpret facial hair the wrong way. Now for ladies, you don't want to wear heels. You want to either wear flats or wedges and just make sure they're comfortable for the interview day because you're going to be doing a ton of walking. The most popular outfit I saw that the women were wearing were about a knee length skirt, a dress shirt, and a suit jacket or blazer. Women, their outfits can be a lot more flexible. Just make sure it looks really nice. It looks professional and make sure you aren't showing any cleavage just because you don't want to distract the interviews from what you're saying up here. And as far as jewelry and makeup, you can wear both. Just make sure it is conservative and looks professional as well. At the end of the day, you want your appearance to look like a doctor that you would want to see. You want to look professional. You want to look like you're there for business, not like you're looking to go out to a club or go to a party. Just use your best judgment when deciding what you want to wear, what you want to put on your face, what kind of jewelry you want to wear, all that good stuff. So after you got your outfit all ready, I want you guys to do your research on the school you're going to. Student Doctor and Reddit are two really good resources to use when looking up interview day experiences for that school. Student Doctor not only has forums on the specific school, but they also have individual questions that have been asked in previous interviews. So you can go through them, look at the weirdest questions, look at the most popular questions. Be sure to familiarize yourself with the format of the interview. So if it's a blind interview, if it's a multiple mini interview, just make sure you are well aware of what kind of interview experience you're gonna be having that day. So for the really weird questions and the really popular questions, I want you guys to come up with an 
answer. It doesn't have to be rehearsed word for word, but just come up with maybe like one to two quick points that you already have thought of, of ahead. So when you do get that question on an interview day, you're not caught off guard and you're not stumbling. And personally, if you get an opinion based question, I think it's important to address both sides, but you should have an opinion one way or the other. You most likely won't get asked religious or political questions, but if you do feel uncomfortable answering them, you can say you don't feel comfortable answering that question. Also, if you get asked if you've ever had an experience or something's ever happened to you that you don't have an answer for, it's perfectly fine to say that's never happened to me or I can't think of an instance where I've been in that situation. The main reason is you don't want to get caught up in a lie. You don't want to make up anything on the interview. You want to be 100% honest and the interviewer will appreciate your honesty. So the most popular question that is asked and the question that I got asked every single interview is why do you want to be a doctor or why do you want to go to medical school? So make sure you have a really good answer for that. You can basically summarize your personal statement in that answer. Just make sure you're ready for that question because it's going to be asked on every single interview. So the day before your interview, I want you guys to rehearse any questions that you might feel iffy about. Make sure you go over and see if there's any other weird questions that people got asked. You want to make sure that you have your travel arrangements to get to the school all set. Whether you need to take a taxi, whether the hotel will shuttle you, whether you have to call Uber or Lyft, just make sure you have travel arrangements ready to go in order to get to the school. A lot of hotels will even call taxis for you at a specific time if you tell the front desk to do that. And when you schedule to get to the interview, make sure you schedule to arrive about 30 minutes early. That way you have plenty of time if there's traffic or if you get lost, you just want to give yourself a good amount of buffer so you're not late for the interview. Eat really well, make sure you have plenty to eat, make sure you have plenty of rest the day before. Go to bed early because you're going to be waking up early. And other than that, just relax. Make sure you're having a good time and make sure you're prepared. Make sure your outfit is looking good and clean and all laid out, ready to go for the next day. So as far as bringing things to the interview, you don't really need to bring a whole lot. I would bring your phone, wallet, ID, maybe a little bit of extra money just in case you need to take a taxi back to your hotel. You can bring a leather portfolio with some paper in it and a pen, but typically a lot of the schools provide paper and pen for you. I personally brought my own leather portfolio just because I wanted to write down emails of my interviewers so I could send them emails after the interview. So the day of the interview, I want you guys to wake up early, eat a really good breakfast. Not every school provides breakfast for you. Some do, but just make sure you have plenty of energy for the rest of the day and give yourself plenty of time to get ready to get dressed, all that good stuff. So once you get there, I want you guys to talk to all of the students there. These students are your potentially your future classmates. So get to know everyone, ask questions, and this will actually help warm you up for the interview. You'll already be answering questions. You'll already be asking questions and just get to know everyone and relax and have a good day. So once your interview day is over, that's pretty much it. You just have to sit and wait. The only thing that I recommend you to do after your interview is email all of the interviewers and just tell them thank you. Tell them you really enjoyed your time at the school. Just keep it short and sweet and just show your appreciation for them taking the time out of their day to interview you for medical school. I think the key thing is just being ultimately prepared for everything that's going on. So as long as you're well prepared for everything that's going to be thrown at you, I know you're going to do great. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the vlog. about 11 o'clock right now and so I got up today at 6 30 and what I'm gonna try to do is shift my sleeping schedule from basically waking up earlier I'm gonna try to wake up between 5 and 6 and then hopefully get the majority of my studying done that day the main reason why is because social media is a big aspect of my life and it takes up a lot of time and not a ton of people are contacting me between 5 and 10 or 6 and 10 in the morning so I can get a lot more work done at that time of the day versus later in the day what I've done so far today 
is I've done yesterday's lecture and then I did one lecture from today. They changed some lectures from last year and this year, so I can't do those lectures until they're up this afternoon. And then I did one lecture that's going to be tomorrow from last year's lecture. So I also switched to OneNote. I'm gonna give OneNote a try. And um, what I've been doing is I have my days of the week under the sections and then I have each lecture under the pages. So I have histology, body fluids, and renal cancer. P, what shirt should I wear today? Black or white? Which one? Mm, you're not much help. Quick shout out to Fernando or Fat Dudes Fitness for sending me out two of his shirts and some wristbands. I'm gonna pick one of these for leg day. I'm not sure which. This is the shirt that Fernando sent me. It's pretty clean. It's got tags on the arm and down here on the bottom. What are you doing? We just finished the cardio section of our class, so we learned how important fish oils are. So I'm taking one fish oil tablet from Ghost, scoop of size. This is black cherry and sour watermelon. I mixed them on accident, and I got my protein in here. So the enteric coating on this fish oil is so good that I can take it before I work out, and I won't get any fishy burps at all throughout the workout or throughout the rest of the day. So I highly recommend this if you take fish oils and you get a lot of burps and you don't like them. One serving size is one capsule, and that's how big it is right there. Super easy to swallow. What's going on guys, back with another voiceover and today I'm training legs. As always, I started my workouts with a compound movement. So we're, today we're doing squats and I started out with 145 and I did 10 reps to warm up. And then I bumped the weight up to 225 and did five reps. So I'm not really on any specific strength training program per se, but I do like to push the weight and I do like to increase my weight whenever possible. So today was not one of those days where I chased a one rep max. All I did was did five working sets of two reps at 315. So you'll see that in the next clip. The, uh, the clip that I recorded, I was a little bit tired. It wasn't the first set of two reps that I did. So uh, as you can see here, I did struggle a little bit, but it's all about, um, you know, always pushing the weight, even when you're tired and uh, giving it all you got. So just really focusing on taking a deep breath, getting that intra-abdominal pressure and pushing out. So the next exercise, and I apologize if these blurs are bothering you, I just didn't want to get their faces in the video because it was pretty obvious, but this is what I did immediately after, basically like a burnout set on squats. Uh, I just kept one plate on and I did uh, 10 reps. So I made sure that I never fully locked down my legs and I squatted as low as possible. So this puts a ton of tension on your quads, especially with a close leg stance that I'm doing right here. And the next exercise that I did were seated calf raises. Now, after my compound movements, I always hit the body parts that are weakest and my calves need a ton of work. So. Uh, as you can see here, I'm just doing really lightweight and what I found to help grow my calves the most is coming down really slowly, controlling, pausing at the bottom to take out any recoil or any spring from your Achilles tendon and then exploding back up to the top. So as you can see here, like I just exploded and then coming down as slow as possible. These will put a ton of tension on your calf muscles and it'll really burn. So after this, I did Smith machine squats. And as you can see, I have a 40 pound dumbbell under my feet and I'm just barely touching my butt just to make sure that I'm getting the appropriate range of motion on this exercise. You can see my toes are lifting up at the top. That's just showing that I'm pushing through my heels and I'm never locking my legs out at the top to keep constant tension on my quads. Now this burns your quads. I mean, you're gonna be feeling it after just this set, but I decided to superset it with sissy squats. Now, these look really funny doing in the gym, but I promise you these will get your quads better than any other exercise that you do. So as you can see, I'm trying to get my heels to touch my butt, and then I'm exploding up to the top. You wanna feel your quads load, you'll feel a lot of tension coming down, and then you wanna go up quick, on the way up and um, this is not bad for your knees guys I know your knees are coming forward but it's really not it's the exact same thing as a leg extension except you're moving your body instead of your lower legs now the last exercise I did were laying hamstring raises and I'm using my arms because I can't I can't obviously pull my entire body up with just my hamstrings so these really burn just make sure you have appropriate padding I do know I have some women viewers on here who requested Madison's workouts so this is one of 
of her movements where she did a one and a quarter squat. Basically, you go down and you go up a quarter of the way, come back down and go all the way up. And this will put a ton of tension on your glutes. Her next exercise were hip thrusts where she um, not only is doing a vertical motion with her hips, but she also has that, that band around her legs to activate the abductor muscles. So she's getting all the angles to activate her entire glute muscles. So I actually recommend guys doing this movement as well, just because guys, you can't neglect your glute muscles and building these up will really help increase the power on your squat. And um, so yeah, girls obviously love doing this because it makes her butt bigger, but guys, you need to do this for your squat too. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's voiceover. Let me know what you guys want to see next. How was your first week of nursing school? Tell them everything you went through this week. What? Tell them what your first week was like. Syllabus. Some more syllabus. And what else? Pharmacology. Bed making. Oh yeah, you made a bed. Do you think it's going to be easy or hard? Hard, but this week wasn't hard. <laughs> so if you want to go to nursing school, first week's easy. Our med school does something really cool where we get matched up with a first year med student and then we basically mentor them throughout the year, give them advice, tell them what to expect. My mentee actually knew before he got into med school, I competed against him in gymnastics. So we're gonna go meet up, me and Madison are gonna go meet up with him and I'll basically give him all the resources I have, tell him what to expect and basically just answer any questions he has about his first year. I think it's a really cool feature that our school does and I still keep intact with my mentor. We're gonna go meet up with him and grab some Dinner. All right guys, it is about 10.15 right now, 10.15 at night. I got back from meeting my mentee about, probably about three hours-ish ago. I gave him actually, I didn't know how much med school material I had. I gave him 67 gigabytes worth of med school material on a hard drive. So I think he's really gonna enjoy that. What we did was talked about each class that he's gonna be having his first year, kind of what I did, what I think he should do. And overall, really happy to give him all that information. I studied for about two to three more hours after that. And I'm actually gonna go to bed here pretty soon. And I will see you guys at five in the morning. Oh yeah, forgot to tell you guys, just wanna give you a quick update. I've been using this Luma white. All it is is activated charcoal. I've been actually noticing my teeth are getting really white. So it's doing what it's supposed to. If you guys want some Luma white, go ahead and go to dazzlepro.com. You can find this on their website. My code EJSonic will get you guys a discount on that. Really happy with that product and I'm glad it's working. So all I do is I brush my teeth with this activated charcoal right before I go to bed and then I'll brush my teeth with regular toothpaste after that. It does not look too good when you're doing it, but I'm telling you, it makes your teeth whiter. I just said really messy. Uh, good morning, guys. It is currently 6.30. You can see, sun's not even up yet. So I'm already done with one of today's lecture. The other lecture is actually different from last year, so I have to wait until this afternoon to do it. But so what I'm doing right now is I'm currently working on my last client's plan. So I'm finishing that up and then I'm gonna start editing this video. And then I'm going to review the rest of the lectures that we did this week. So I only have Wednesday through Friday because of our, our exam, because we just had an exam on Wednesday. So not a ton of material to review, but I'm trying to stay on top of things and even get ahead in some cases. So far, this is actually my fifth or fourth day of waking up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm actually really enjoying it. So I think I'm gonna start doing this more often. I'm gonna let you guys know how I like it. It's been raining nonstop today. Shake. Good girl. We're gonna go ahead and get a shoulder and chest workout in. I showed that workout in the last video, so I'm not gonna show that this week, but really raining outside. I don't think we're gonna do anything else fun, so I'm gonna end the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment down below what you guys wanna see next, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.